Okay, so this is just going to be a quick video on how to install Intelligent Auto. So it can be a bit, a bit tricky because it's right in the middle of being developed at the moment. So first step you need to do is to clone the repo. So I'll put the link in the description, but that's pretty straightforward. There's one thing you do have to add, which is git clone, and then do hyphen hyphen recursive because it relies on some other repos to work it, um, you have to put that in so it pulls them all in so you just run that change into it now we can check out what branch we're on with git status so we see we're on the master branch if I bring the browser over this is the repo and there's quite a few branches normally and these are all the things that Robert the guy who's made the software is working on so you can try some of these ones if there's functions you need or the main one really is develop so if you click develop we're now in this this branch but you can see these are the sub modules it's using so Android Auto SDK and also Open Auto so these commit hashes here are quite important because we need our sub modules to be on the same commit hash so we can check that if we go back on the pie if we change into we'll do AASDK first so you can see we're on D875304 this one needs 906CAE1 so all we've got to do there may be a better way to do this this is how I do it but get check out then you can just write in that commit hash so 906 CAE1 okay, and now we're on that one so we've just got to do the same with open all time so go up one directory go into open all time just find out what we're on first so we're on 5DF which is different so we'll do the same again so git check out 254 a. so you can do it by checking out the branch but sometimes probably not so much with the develop branch but if you're on other branches they could be back a commit or two so I normally find this is the most foolproof way of doing it so now we've checked out the branches you can either build it manually with the instructions that are on on here or you can use, I've created a bash script which we can download and use that so if we go to mine this install.sh I've put in a pull request now so hopefully it will be in the main develop branch but for now we'll just we'll just take this one ok so until it's pulled in an easy way to just get this script into your project if we highlight it all so we just copy it go back to the pi so go up one directory and then we just do nano install.sh and we can just paste it in and then control x and y to save and enter to save the name so now we need to make it executable which is chmod plus x install.sh and then we can just run it which is full stop forward slash install dot sh now it'll run through first it'll install all the dependencies on the system they're already installed so it's going to go through it quite quick and then it's going to go through and make various various files that need making um, towards the end it's going to set your USB permissions so without them you can't get Android Auto working uh, with your Pi user account so it sets them up for you they are like wide open permi permissions so if you want to make them more secure feel free I'll just leave them like this and like the Pi is not really connected to the internet when it's in the car so you can see it comes through the system and now it's actually building the software now so this is going to take quite a long time so your best bet is just to leave it, go and do some other stuff and then come back. It'll probably take about 15-20 minutes to do. Okay, so it looks like it's just about to finish. Now 
and when it does it, it then makes your USB permissions that be the next step so they're already done on this Raspberry Pi but it, it picks up that the files are already there final part uh, rules exist starts the app and it's, it's there it's running so I'll just do a little walk through the, the software I can plug my phone in just to check uh, Android Auto but it doesn't display the actual Android Auto when you're on remote desktop I'll just plug it in usual thing and this is this black window here is it actually running so if I check on the monitor that the Raspberry Pi is actually plugged into it is on there and it's it's working so unplug that for now you've got media player you can do on the on the latest branch because we're on develop it doesn't seem to be there but you can do uh, Bluetooth or local you've got some basic OBD um, diagnostics, just speed, revs, engine load, the settings. Again, this is the basic one at the moment because it's just the develop branch. You've got you can turn on your dark mode. You've got these different colours. So dark mode. You change your accent colour. And you can change between imperial metric brightness control, you've got all your standard stuff, Bluetooth, and you've got your open auto settings. That's pretty much it. If you if you want to try one of the different branches, so I've been doing I've been using the key binding one quite a bit, then you can you can just check out the key binding branch instead. If you want to run it again now, if you just list your directories you'll have one called bin. So if you just C D to bin have a look in there there's a file called IA so you just do full stop forward slash IA enter and then then it will run up now what you can do the last thing I'll probably show just because I've got the file on here is you've got the auto start settings so if I remember correct they're in ETC, I think it's XDG, I believe. Let's close that. So in the XDG folder, and then in Auto Start, I've made one called IA. So if I open that in text editor, that's just pretty much all it is. This is the path to my actual install, not the one we've just done. This is the one I'm actually running in the car. That's all you've got to do, and then it will start up when it launches. If I just quickly give you a little walkthrough of the actual install, so it's got more features in it. So if I run this one. See the latest version is a lot quicker to start up as well. So you got a few extra tabs down here. Um, you see here in the media player, Bluetooth or local. That page is pretty much the same. This is the app launcher where I've got my uh, my Jaguar app running in it. You can just choose what app you want just by browsing it, and then you can tick whether to launch it or start up. And in the settings page, and you see there's a lot more at the top. So you've got the colours got some more on layout so you can hide some of these tabs if you don't use them you can change what's on the quick view you can hide the control bar down the bottom which I normally do hide there got some Bluetooth settings these shortcuts are good so you can map these straight to GPIOs so you press that button that GPIO and it will launch a tab straight on here Cycle pages is quite a nice one that he's just added, so you can just have one physical button on the dash which will cycle through these. 
and then just your standard open all type things. You've got the keyboard shortcuts for this one, so you can do your steering wheel controls. So yeah, that's pretty much it.